all different channels. Welcome back. We've got something new for you today. A lot of you have been asking, well, uh, Tristan, what's a great CRM that matches with my business or that attaches to a website that has IDX and drips and all this great stuff? Well, we've got Sierra for you. And believe it or not, they've been around for a while. So some of you have heard of Sierra Interactive and some of you haven't. So this is why we're doing this. We've got Zach, who is a broker, real estate agent team, and JC, who's with Sierra. How are you? Good. Doing? How are you? Good, good. Thanks for doing this, guys. I appreciate this. Of course. Yeah, they, jump on. they jump on and share it. I like it. All right, JC, any questions that come through about Sierra? We're going to quarterback them to you inside of the chat. Um, Jake's watching some of our Facebook, our LinkedIn, Twitter. And if he sees any questions there, he'll quarterback them through here as well. All right. Okay. Excellent. Good. Zach, yeah. dude, tell me about your business and where are you located? How long have you been in real estate? Ah, great question. Uh, hey, we're in Edmond, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City area. So, hey, whenever you guys need those Oklahoma referrals, man, send us send us our way. Those small block there. But uh, uh, been in real estate since uh, oh gosh, it's been 15 years or so now. Uh, mm -hmm. started as an agent right at the probably the worst time of the well uh, uh, you know we're, really bad time after the uh, financial crisis collapsed back in you know the late 2000s so that was really fun um yeah, perfect started, time to come in man yeah yeah sort of yeah for them to come in and and now we're uh um we run a a, a, a half team half independent brokerage uh probably 50 60 real estate agents that work with us here in our in our market I love that. Some good partner companies, some mortgage on the side, some pro some property management partners, and insurance, all that all that kind of stuff under under a house. We do a lot of a lot oh, of you, database. A lot of things that you offer, JC. Where are you located? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, so East Coast. Oh, right. Charleston, yep. South Carolina, yeah, and Oklahoma. I'm in what's we'll just called Ventura County, California. Jake in the background, who you don't see, is also in Ventura. Everyone, let me know. What I need two things from you, and then we'll get started. What city and state are you from, and how long have you been in this business? So, city and state in years, okay? Zach, yeah. dude, you're using Sierra Interactive, yeah. and you're using it to automate. You're using it to leverage and to help out your team, your brokerage. Um, talk to me about automations with Sierra Interactive. How does that work? Yeah, great, great question. I think again, it's take a step back first you know i've been um uh when i when i first started in real estate i was a young kid and couldn't really work that sphere of influence very well uh because mm -hmm. you know you're nobody's going to trust you or believe you you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, just didn't, didn't have the database the people that we knew weren't the people that were buying houses at the time right <laughs> we're definitely not selling houses yet so mm -hmm. i had to cut my teeth another way and did it through the digital marketing space and over the years we've done a lot of uh, a lot of different websites, a lot of different CRMs, a lot of that stuff. Um, been a part of some really cool um, uh, organizations, and we've ultimately landed, landed it with the the Sierra piece because it allows us to have a lot more control over keeping in touch with our database. So, okay. um, I'm sure. You know, I'm, how many times do you get to a, a post or a question inside of a uh, lot of code agents asking, "Hey, what's the best CRM?" Every day. <laughs> Every day, Every day right? Yeah. And what's what's the top answer, dude? Um, you know what the answer I hate? That's the top answer. I'll what tell you. Use? I hate that answer. But right? That is the number one. I don't know who said that first, but I absolutely hate that answer. Yeah, it's a horrible answer. It is. Answer. Yeah, you have to use it, but it also has to work, right? Like it has to hit the points that we need in our business, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it upsets me. It's a massive pet peeve I have. So I'm glad you did too, Zach. No, it, it's not just you. It's me too. But you know, there, there are a lot of good ones out there. Um, but there, there is something to that. We still have to use it. And so in order, in uh, whatever CRM you use, I think in order for the automation of the system to work, we have to make sure that agents, either yourself or your team, are using it. And so in order That's for the automations to work, we, we always ask our agents to do what we call our big four. Um, they are logged to communication, right? So I'm having one of my last 
uh, communication was done. And this is what one of the things I love about the Sierra version we haven't had in the past was having an integrated dialer. We're able to, as, as, a, as a team leader, broker, I'm able to, and my sales manager, able to listen to phone calls agents are making. Do, we can do role plays and objection handlers and overcome those scripts and objections with yeah. having that game film. Um, and we also know when we talked about it last or forgot to write down that email. What was that email we just we wrote down? What, what did we talk about? I, mean, I, I can go back and reference that. Uh, so they're logging their communication. That's number one. Okay. Uh, the number number two is are they in the right category, right? Or we use categories strictly based on timeline, right? This is this is something that uh, I'm really passionate about talking to our agents and the public, or uh, uh, really agent ecosphere about is what's a lead, right? What well, lead is somebody's buying or selling right now? Not necessarily, right? Real estate is I think is a relationship sales game, meaning. If I'm at Best Buy or I'm a car salesman, I can probably script somebody and salesperson somebody into buying a TV today, right? Because I'm a great salesperson and can, I can use those tie downs and scripting and, and neuro-linguistic programming to really get them excited about this cool TV, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can't do that in real estate. We can't, you can't neuro-linguistic program somebody into buying a house today if it's not right for their family no. or selling their house today if it's not right for their family. And so being in relationship with them when it is the right time is more important than being good at the scripts and conversion in, in, in our theory. In our, in that, that's our working theory. That's a great uh, theory. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and so this is why the categories are important. Let's get everybody is a lead. The question is, where are they in the process? Are they six years out? Are they seven years out? Are they one year out? Are they 90 days out? Right. So that's where the category is important. So number one, we're logging that call. Uh, or logging that communication. Number two, we're right, make sure they're in the right category. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number three, we're setting our next follow up. When are we following with this person next? Right. Uh, got it. So the, the next action step. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Got it. Absolutely. I like when am I going? So we just talked today. I referred you to a lender. I'm going to follow up tomorrow to make sure you guys got in touch. Or you know, you're moving here in six months. You you got the job. You got the job interview next week. I'll follow up late next week after the job interview, right? Whatever whatever that looks like. Okay, uh, I like those that. are the one, two, and three. And the fourth one is: Are they on a home search? Got it. That's the basic basic stuff, right? Dude, the more I'm talking to you, the more I realize that you and I function exactly the same, which is great. We're like, just great, and we're phenomenally good looking. Oh, dude! I mean, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> it's up to the audience to design. Yeah. <laughs> um, home search. Yeah. I have the philosophy that everyone and anyone in my database needs to be on a home search. What's your philosophy? Let me ask you this. Um, who shouldn't be on a home search? The people that are not in my database. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought I got the wrong yeah. answer with, you, with oh. your, I was like, what? I didn't answer oh, they're, 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 there's nobody, right? Well, they, they aren't looking right now. Okay, well, do they own a home? Yeah, so now I'm setting them a market report on their home search for their comps, right? Mm -hmm. um, or, well, they're not looking for a while. Well, when they do start looking, we want to make sure that we're we're top of mind when they start looking. Yeah. How often do people start, you know, I think our, our database over the last five years, um, a buyer registration, whether it was a web registration or whether it was a, an automate or a manual input, has averaged around, uh, I think it was 343 days from registration to close. Um, and then sellers were about 417. So mm -hmm. we were able to track that. And so, hey, most people, some people are 90 days, most are a year out or a year longer than that. So we have to keep in touch with our database. Uh, on that, mm -hmm. we've also noticed over the years that the number one email opened is the home search email, which has always been ridiculous to me. Like, there's no way. I have people on our database that have a 100% open ratio, but I've never talked to them because they don't pick up the phone. But they open up that damn email mm -hmm. every time. You Same thing, right? But, you know, you, you stole my bad joke I was going to use. I oh. talk to my agents all the time about it. <laughs> we need to talk. More about that. That's why. <laughs> No, I, I, you know, I get an everyday orientation uh, when we orient, uh, bring new agents on board or, or doing that initial coaching session. We always ask them, hey, what do you think is the best drip campaign? Which, which email do you think has the best open rate? Uh, and they're like, well, maybe it's a, 
you know, qualification plan, or maybe it's a revitalization campaign, or maybe just really fancy text message. And really, it's just a home search. That's the reason they yeah. talk to you at the beginning. They, they don't want you. They want a house or get rid of a house. That's it. Yeah. So give them what they want. I agree, man. Um, I agree. Okay. So that went a long way to answer your question. You said you have four things. I love that. That was good. But if they, it starts with those foundational principles first, because the system can't work unless we're keeping the data up to date. Right? I like that. Well, that makes sense. So if they're on e-alerts, they're on their, uh, or click home searches, right? We don't send any home searches from MLS. They're all coming from our website. Mm -hmm. We have a much higher way to track consumer behavior. What speaks louder? Actions or words. Right, Dude, their actions. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. How many times do you get a buyer lie to you? All the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so we base our follow up on their actions. Right. And their act. We can't follow them around all the time, yeah. but what we can do is track them all over the internet. And right. if they're looking at a house five times. I'm gonna get a notification whether they're looking at it on our on our on our white label app we use or whether they're looking at it. Um, on our uh, on our CR side, which are integrated, mm -hmm. um, we are, are notifying our agents to. Um, they're notifying our agents to, hey, this is what to follow up with. I have a question on the follow up. Yeah, um, specifically on that. But first, I want to. There's a few people that responded uh, mm -hmm. where they're at, how long they've been in the business. Yeah, I think Kirk wins. If we're looking for the person that's been in the business for the longest, uh, Marietta, California. What's up, man? Uh, 42 years. That's that's a long time, and I, I love that. And now we're going to go for the shortest, and I think it's four years. Shen Shenanda, uh, Mountain Home, Idaho, four years. I love that. Then John jumped jumped in. John, better late than never. Twenty two years. I love it. Thank you, uh, Zach. Back to you. If they're engaged in your Sierra website mm -hmm. and you're getting the notification on the back end, um, what, what are some key metrics that you look for that then prompt you to reach out to them? Yeah, it's a great question, right? Um, back to the really bad answer. If you know the one you use of the CRM. We have to. We also know that if we're going to fail as 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 a real estate agent or salesman or company, it's probably not going to be to lack of good tech. It's probably going to be the lack of execution, right? Yeah. As far as an agent goes, and so even if if the best tech's out there, we still have to do our part. Um, and so one of the keys we found to uh, having a high execution level is make things as simple as possible, less thinking, more doing. And okay. so every day when our agents log in, they have our filters lined up at the top of their of their database, right? And they're going okay. from left to right. You I'll, see? I'll, I'll pull mine up real quick so I can come. Yeah, I'd love to see that, man. That way I can see yeah. how you guys operate. Well, I want to make sure I don't share like names and numbers of people on here real quick. So I'm going to just move some stuff around. No problem. But, we are uh, someone in the chat too that um, worked for you. Zach, yeah. Nifto. Yeah. Oh, I started under Zach. He's a great broker. And looking back, I see a lot of value in things I learned under him. Nick Doe. Perfect. Thanks, hey, JC. All right, buddy. Bring... All right. So let me see if I can share this. I'm going to try to share a portion. Um, hold on one sec. Let's look. You froze a little bit, buddy. While we are unfreezing, um, Nick. Dude, you got to tell us some stories about Zach while he's not here. I mean, <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't. We can save that one for later. Uh, yeah, no better time. <laughs> JC, can you tell me what you hear as from, from other agents? What's some things that people love about Sierra? Like, what do people are like? Oh, this is why I'm still with Sierra after all these years. Oh, this is why I love it. What are, what are some of those things yeah. that you hear? Yeah, absolutely. And so kind of tagging on to what Zach was saying, there's a lot in the Sierra platform that allows 
you to focus as a team on the dollar productive activities that will be successful and drive the business forward. So like what Zach was saying, setting up the automations, the action plans, the things like that to have the system work for you um, is so crucial in playing the long game. You heard Zach referencing the lead time, the lead to close time. Um, having a system be able to do a lot of that work for you. That way you're laser focused on those dollar productive activities that will drive your business and mm -hmm. keep you transacting. Um, that's so important specifically around, you know, we're right with the market right now. Uh, homes are staying on the market a little bit longer. It's taking a lot yeah. more to produce buyers for some of the homes that are listed out there. So having the system really be one of those tools that can, can play the long game for you is super important. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, okay, here, here, can you guys see the screen okay? I can, yep. buddy. I see, okay. uh, Jose Resto. Perfect. Okay. So, um, here, or I just start left to right every day when they come in. First one okay. I want them looking at is this database ads in the last 30 days, right? So, yes, we need to work our database really well, but we also can't remember we have to keep feeding it. Okay, got it. Right? So feeding it's just as important as managing it. Um, so here's some real numbers. We've, we've added 828 people the last 30 days in our office, which this is a slow time of year. Um, for where, that where, are you feeding, where are you feeding the leads from? Uh, Google PPC, Facebook, Mets, open houses, what's going on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase this. What's the number one source for you for uh, incoming leads right now? Uh, our top two, um, our top two lead sources for closed year deals are, uh, it's like everybody else's sphere of influence, and then PPC or, or pay per click web registrations. And we'll yeah. drive. We we'll, we'll uh, think Sierra drives uh, runs a lot of that stuff for us, uh, but they'll drive traffic through um, Google, Facebook, retargeting, remarketing. I want to get to that here in a second too. Okay. But as as far as the execution goes, that make it simple. They just start on the left and work their way right. Database ads that I add enough for my new leads, work my untapped potential, right? My untapped potential would be, you know, folks that this thing will load my internet's running a little slow for me right now. But these are folks that are showing indications that um, I can't, uh, these are showing indications that um, they've either back, been back on the website recently and have not been called um their 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 actions are showing they're doing something but we haven't communicated with them not it right and next are our follow-ups due today so i of my big four I, I told myself when i was going to follow up next right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now i'm doing i'm doing what i told myself i was going to do today i'm going to do my follow-ups got it next i'm going to go to my tasks that i maybe i didn't get to sometimes we don't get to them all today yeah, uh, we should, but we, we never do, right? So next, my overdue I tasks. Never do. Yeah, right. Next, I'm I'm going to my safety net number one. It's my needs e alert, right? If I know that each lead has to have their home search, here's my safety net to realize that hey, these are all the criteria of people that should be on a home search, and here's the ones I forgot. Question on that one, man. Yeah. Do all the leads that come through, if they're coming in from, let's say, say specifically Google PPC, do they come in already set up with a home search based on what they're looking at? Or do you have to go in and change that and add that? Great question. The ones that come through uh, through Google PPC, yes, we'll have an automated one set up based on what they're searching for, right? So mm -hmm. we're trying to do as much as we can off the agent as possible. But if they don't have one set up in there, nine times out of 10, it's a manual ad from an agent. Oh, got it, got it. Or they they made them up at an open house and the agent forgot to go set one up. Okay, it was a got referral it. to the agent and the agent just forgot to go set up their dealer or their, their property updates. Perfect. And this is that safety net. So at the end of your lead gen session, the end of your call session today, you know, you're, you're setting into business. Don't forget, agent, to go down and see who you forgot to set up an dealer for. I Same like that. thing with that with that task, right? What are those active categories that you know that that you know somebody that's in the next that you want to follow up with that you maybe well here's what happens all the time is I'm you know making a bunch of follow-up calls, maybe I'm calling five or ten people today, maybe it's 50 or 60, depending on the you know the day or or where how you know focused I am in in, in my business. Mm -hmm. Um 
but I'm making a bunch of calls, having a great conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something I definitely want to follow up with or need to call tomorrow or the next day. And then my phone rings or somebody walks in my office or walks in my room and I forget that I get distracted and don't finish logging the information or setting my next follow-up. Got it. it. It happens all the time, right? And so every day when I'm done with my lead gen session, I'll just go back through my safety net number two. Who did I forget to set my follow-up with that I talked to the last couple of days? I like that one. Right. And then this is our data bank. The next one is that, that data bank. Again, it's it's a little farther out, people. So the 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 untapped potential one is the is a higher chance of, of, of conversion based on activity. And the data bank is the ones that are farther out that shows that if it shows some activity, but not as um not as likely based on what they're searching. Maybe, maybe these guys only save a couple of favorites, and maybe these guys over here on, on the untapped potential, um, you know, or are, are, are have multiple five views of houses and running mortgage calculators and all those really high indicators, and then the mm -hmm. lower indicators on the data bank. Um, I have a question, really yeah. quick, man, because uh, it's pertinent to this. What's up, Ruth? Uh, she's got the question. Hey, Ruth. How often are you adjusting the searches for PPC? Maybe they came in looking at uh, homes at a million dollars, but later they're looking at three million. Do you adjust it? Does it automatically do it? How does this work? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Um, when we're going through and making our phone calls, when as, as a system's dialing for us through the through the through our our, our calls today or the, the, through these lists we're calling through. We're looking at that. We can pull the property page, see what they're looking at, and definitely make adjustments on that. Uh, it's also, I was talking with one of my agents today. She loves finding leads that are looking at properties that are different than what their searches are set up for. Because then that gives her a reason to call. Right? So, hey, Tristan, right. I saw you're looking. Uh, I know we talked to you today. You're looking in uh, Ventura and, and uh, I don't know, whatever else is around. Maybe it's a couple of different counties around the area. And now all of a sudden you're looking at I've seen a bunch of really not looking in mature anymore. And now you're looking only in Charleston. Um, do you mean to switch, switch this home search up for you where you only get in Charleston stuff? What's what's changed? It's a, it's a reason to call. It's a reason to add value when you're seeing those. Makes and sense. so that's those are opportunities for us to connect the database, which is really what we want to begin with. I have a question uh, for you. Does the system by any chance do this automatically as people search do either of you know the answer or yeah jc can be this jc yeah it does yep so we go ahead and we create that automatically for them um that way they can go in and make adjustments as necessary like zach said when they are um, having those conversations but in terms of like the actual searches and stuff themselves it creates it for them got it i love it all right cool man Thank you, JC. All right, continue. Um, let's see what's next on here. Investors. Next, next is our investor list. We we work with a lot of investors. We have a sister property management company. So that's a big list for us specifically. Um, and then this final one is the needs the needs market report, right? That's that's our home search for our homeowners that aren't actively looking, but we're definitely keeping them at the very least. And uh, what's going on? If they're a closed uh, uh, past client of ours, anybody that we know that owns a home, you know, they're getting that report on what's going on in their neighborhood or, or their whatever would be a comp for them. Maybe it's their maybe it's their building, maybe it's their neighborhood, whatever. Maybe it's their community, whatever their community is, whatever would be a comp for them. Um, they're definitely getting that just to stay in touch. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of a lot of stuff down the list. And this is what's cool about the system. Mm -hmm. Is we like we do a lot of investor stuff. So we have an, we we have a, we can segment it out as investors. I've seen other people segment out all kinds of different things. They have new construction segments. They have investor segments. They have downsizing segments. They have you know all you can you can segment this and make this database really customizable and whatever you need to do to apply to your apply to your market or you know with those those vacation market guys you know they, they'll segment out based on. Um, especially people in different uh, uh, time zones. But we'll see them segment out on, hey, these guys are East Coast, these guys are West Coast, these guys are, uh, you know, central time zone. Or, or, and so they're they're being able to communicate with their folks in the right time as well. I like that, man. Uh, question from 
Angelus, I'm not sure it's, or maybe it's Angelus. Um, can we take a look at your website and who designs it? Like the front end of that. Yeah, it's where we're in the middle of additional site pages being added right now. You're welcome to look at it. It's just, uh, let's see here. Is that the homestead realty.co or co.com? I just, I'll, I'll pop that in the, uh, host and panelists. I, yeah, it's homestead realty co.com. Got it. And then homestead realty. I see it. It's on the top here. I'll grab it. You know what? I'm going to just share my screen and go through this with you just to, yeah. you can kind of guide me through it. All right, here we go. This is your site. This That's is it. awesome. You got the home search right in the middle. Uh, communities, buyers, sellers, about contact careers. I like that. Yeah. If I scroll through, mm -hmm. you you let me scroll and take a look at homes. Yeah. I like this. This is a cool thing, dude. Great SEO on this. We're, we're building out a, a, about 8,000 more of those in process right now. Only 8,000. Got it, dude. You're yeah. slack. And, and, it's not, and it's a way where we're not having to do that manually. We're able to do that through some scripts. Um, this is something that we weren't able to do in the past, but we're able to do now. We're really excited, really excited about that. Nice. That's cool. Dude, you're going to have to show me that. Uh, this report right here. Mm -hmm. Is this what, what a seller, when they become a seller, is this what they get after something like this? Yeah, some, some real similar to that. They're showing some um, market trends. They're seeing, hey, average prices in their neighborhood. They're seeing average days on market and they're, they're, they're getting a cool little graph watching, walking them through that, not just, you know, active properties in the neighborhood. I like that. And then the blogs, do you write these through your team? Does Sierra write them for you? Do you use chat GPT, a mix of everything? What does this look it, like? It's a whole mix. You can do them a bunch of different ways. Uh, if I go into this one, yeah. let's take a look. Yeah. Oh, nice, man. I like Simple. that. It. Like a real blog. Yeah. And then let's go and find a neighborhood, right? Let's go look at an area. Yeah. Give me problems. a city. Give me an area in your city. Um, just type in uh, Edmond, E D M O N D. Ed, is that like okay. that? There we go. City Edmond, Oklahoma. Let's take a look. Nice. I want to take a look at a map view though. Yeah. Oh, very cool. You got open houses are in red. Can mm -hmm. I, uh, Zach, can yeah. I just identify and filter the open houses and send those out to my clients? Yeah, absolutely. We, we actually have that as one of our automations and drip campaigns <clears throat> in the, I guess our second or third communication to get from us is would you like a list of open houses? Dude, you know what? I'm going to stop sharing really quick just to talk to you. One of my favorite texts to do, this is for people that have been in our database and they're kind of dead. It's a simple text that says, I'm not sure if you're here this weekend, but I've got a list of open houses for you. Do you want me to text that or email it to you? Love That's it. That. That's all I do. And then people are like, text it, text it, text it, text it. And then we're mass texting. We're like, okay, here we go. That's why I love that feature. That's cool. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll do that one. Um, you know, we'll, we'll also throw out a distressed property. Say you're looking for a distressed property, short sale or foreclosure. And that one gets a really high answer rate for us as well. Um, and the, we, you know, 95% of people out there don't actually want a foreclosure or short sale. They just want a really good deal. Mm -hmm. But it opens the conversation for us. Yeah, that's the key, man. Let right. me ask you something. Yeah. Uh, because it sounds like you've been doing this for a while. And what I found, I want to know if what I found is similar to what you found. Mm -hmm. um, Google PPC, to me, um, is, our, is our second highest source of closed uh, mm -hmm. transactions. Number one is the referrals. Yeah. Uh, Google PPC is high up there, though. And... For us, I've always been very careful as to what company I used to drive the Google PPC to us. And I've tried a lot of them. Uh, how do you find the Google PPC leads for, for Sierra? How do you find them as far as quality? As far as quality goes, um, yeah. we've been doing PPC for probably 10 years now um, with different vendors. You know, and you know, for a long time, people would say PPC is dead. 
right? And then I, I it never was for us. We we've had some of the best quality, and, and when I say when I say quality, I want to just quantify that real quick. Um, we're defining quality as as connection rate. Got it. Did we were we able to turn this into a real person? Now after that, that's on us, right? But was this a real person? And was it was it a real person that is in in our target market? It, what we're targeting is it? A, it's not a real person that's looking for the uh, head of the HOA. Is this a right? Is this a person who's thinking about or looking at homes to either buy or sell or home prices? Right. If they're looking at that's that's our target market. And if uh, we're we're seeing some of the best we've seen um, in the last several years. Uh, um, in the system, I've been, been re very, 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 very pleasantly surprised. All right, cool, dude. I'm excited to try it. I, I don't, yeah. I don't run Google PPC through Sierra, so I'm excited to test it out. I've tested it out with um, Boomtown, Sync, mm -hmm. yep. P4, yep. Um, Real Geeks. Uh huh. Obviously, Ylopo. I still run all of my Google PPC now through Ylopo. Uh, and a few other ones. Those are the only ones that come to mind. But I've never tested Sierras, so I'm excited to test it out. Uh, that's good. All right, question. Ruth's got a great question. Uh, thanks for participating, Ruth, and I'm going to get to the other ones. Two questions. How much are you spending on Sierra, Zach? Okay. Right. And do you have the numbers in front of you as far as how many leads or closings that you do from, from the spend? Okay, so this is going to be a, a harder question to answer, right? Because the yeah. question it depends, right? Um, you know, we so often we find back to the earlier we talked about uh, the registration to close of around three hundred. Uh, was it 343, 306, I can't remember what the number was. It was in the mid three hundreds of registration, mm -hmm. and what we found is as we're getting registrations in. Our remarketing and retargeting drives a lot of traffic back as well. So although an initial lead source may be, I think you mentioned you mentioned a couple of different places out there a second ago, maybe an initial lead source may be one of those or somewhere else, it's the continual driving either the dynamic ads or the Facebook remarketing, retargeting ads that continue to drive that interaction inside the inside the CRM. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to beat around the bush for you here, Ruth. I mean, we've averaged, I mean, our team has averaged at least 100 PPC closings the last four or five years, mm -hmm. uh, just straight from PPC. And then there's a, there's been a, a bunch of, I mean, I have one agent that uh, um, she's on her 13th referral from one PPC ad or lead. Um, so she's gotten, you know, 13 referrals off this guy from this guy in, in, in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And she closed five deals for other people before she closed his. Mm. Right. And so it's not just about the conversion rate from that lead. It's more about this. It's, it's another way to just have more conversations around real estate. And if you do good at your job, you're going to be, you're going to get the other referrals as well. So there's a, we also track yeah. secondary source in there. Right? That's a, that's a good one. We track secondary source. So this is the past client referral from that. So it kind of daisy chains down. Yeah. Um, here's here's what I would say. Uh, R Ruth, uh, Ruth's a great agent. So Ruth, mm -hmm. you, know, you know your stuff. So here's, I'll just cut to the bottom line. When we ran our numbers, because we were running uh, Google PPC since 2009. So Google AdWords. Uh, um, just the last few years, when we looked at our numbers and broke them down, because we ran Zillow up until 2016 and we cut it off uh, October, 2016. And the reason was, and it's still the same because we run our numbers, every closing for Zillow would cost us $8,000 per closing. Now we're in a market similar to yours, Ruth, you know, Malibu, Calabasas, Westlake Village. But when we looked at our Google PPC closings, it was $1,800 per closing. When we looked at both, we're like, this is ridiculously stupid to continue to market with Zillow. So this is why we went all in, and now we're north of twenty thousand dollars a month just on Google PPC spend. So when you look at it that way, per closing, you're like, got it. 
it makes sense. But to Zach's point, like you got to have your systems down and you have to make sure that the people that are calling this, like they're actually, un uh, they understand how the leads work and what they need to do to close them long-term. It's a magnificent question, Ruth. JC, could you connect with Ruth? Because she wants to, she wants to know what else she can be doing as far as uh, lead generate, lead generating and optimizing that, that lead generation. Yes, 100%. Ruth, I'll reach out to you and I'll connect you with our training team. We have a fabulous training team in-house and we also have Sierra Academy built into the CRM that Zach was showing. So I'll reach out to you, Ruth. And then I'll show you guys what Google PPC is really quick so you can see how all the companies out there that are not agents, brokers, us, right? It's us with us, all right? Nobody... Nobody cares about our competition. They just want to take us out, meaning Zillow, Realtor.com, all of the home builders. I'm going to show you something really quick. Uh, but first, I want to get to the questions. There were some really good ones. Um, we saw the front end design, right? Uh, 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 properties filter from the MLS. Uh, Shananda, yes, all the properties come in directly from the MLS. How do you get the people to stay on with you if you give them the open houses? Zach, I'm going to go to you. What do you okay. say? Let's go into the, uh, how do you get people to stay on with you to get the open house? What do you, uh, what's... When you, when you send them the open houses, mm -hmm. Yeah. how do you, I mean, you run the risk of them going. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's role play that with me real quick. Tristan, will you ask me to send you a list of open houses? Yeah, Zach. Yeah. So you know what? Send me a list of open houses. I'm here this weekend. Hey, awesome. Hey, I uh, just want to make sure I send you the right type. What area you're looking in? I'm looking at Edmond. You're looking at Edmond. Awesome. What price range? Uh, no more than 300,000. No more than 300? Awesome. Um, uh, what's got you looking in Edmond? Uh, we're thinking of relocating from, look, listen, I live in California, so I can probably buy like 50 homes with the sale of my one Let's home. Let's do it. So, you know. Perfect. We'll, we'll turn those other ones and rental, rental properties. We'll manage those for you too. Yes. Awesome. Sorry, are you currently working with an agent? No, look, I, I, I think I'm just looking online. I okay. just, I don't want to. And by the way, cash or finance? Definitely cash. Cash is perfect. I'll tell you what. Um, I'm happy to just meet you out at a few houses instead of of doing an open. Uh, what's your schedule like this weekend? Uh, well, we're gonna be in and out. So the idea oh. was, if if you sent us the open houses, yeah. we would just kind of pop in whenever we sure. were driving by. You know. Yeah. But, hey, matter of fact, no problem. The links in your email. Um, hey, we do a, a, w w today is Wednesday. Today's yep. Wednesday. You're going to try to look at what was on, on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Probably um, Saturday. Probably Saturday. Perfect. Well, very, very good. Uh, well, let me know if you have any questions about those houses and, and then we'll uh, go from there. And then I'm going to follow up tomorrow. Hey, do you have any questions on those houses? Right. We're, we're going down the, we're just going down any. We're going to give them information, right? We're going to deliver that, but not without getting something back. We're going to get what you want back. Yeah. And which exactly. that helps you more. Most of these, remember, when we're using the open house ones for people that have been kind of dead in our database. Mm -hmm. So the point is to get them to raise their hand to be like, hey, I'm still alive. Yeah, send it, send me the list. Mm -hmm. And now you can start again and be like, okay, got it. Now I'm going to follow up. Let's get a little closer to where you are. And that's the whole idea. That's it. That, that's why I thought it was a great question. Yeah, um, love that question. This one's for JC. I don't know if you know this one. Scott says, how well is the integration from other lead sources outside the big box companies? Uh, how do you overcome the emails going to spam instead of inbox? Two questions there. Do you know the answer, guys? Yeah. So for, on the integration front, Sierra does integrate with a lot of different lead sources because the goal is nurturing them all and driving them all into your CRM so that you can see the action that they're taking on your site. So we do integrate with a lot of different companies. If we don't have a direct integration, a lot of our customers use API Nation or Zapier or one of those like middleware companies to drive leads into the Sierra site. But we have hundreds of integrations set up um, largely across different resources as well. Uh, can, then, I, can I speak to the email portion, JC? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, uh, where should we go? Um, oh, we're, no, no, I was going to speak to the email. Now, now I lost my question. Email. Uh, it was the, how do you overcome? Oh, the spam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. spam. Um, that's something we, we had an issue with that at other systems in the past. And there, 
the the emails we we we've, we've seen Darge with SendGrid and we're able to get a much higher deliverability and open rate powering yeah. through that. It took, takes some time to season it and do it right. There's a lot of things you need to do well up front, but it integrates with SendGrid. So we're able to send a mass amount of emails without getting those massive spam. I think we're at like a 98% reputation and 99.3% deliverability rate with a 0.04% um, spam flag. So being able, able to by have, yeah. having those metrics and be able to deliver a good list, season it correctly, appropriately, you're going to continue to have a high deliverability. I love that, man. I love those numbers too. Now, I want to show, we're way over, but who cares? I'm learning. Um, I'm going to share with you Google. We're going to have a little fun and then I'll let everybody go here. Uh, homes for sale in Oklahoma. If I spell this wrong, don't kill me, okay? Oklahoma City. Yeah. There. Good. I'm glad Google helped me. Um, look, look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking to you about. Sponsored, mm -hmm. sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. Uh, big metro areas will always have four sponsored before they get into the uh, organic SEO. But I want to show you that the people that you're buying leads from, they're playing this game at a high level. Zillow. Realtor.com. And I can do this all day in different areas. And it'll always mix between these two, Redfin, uh, Builders. You'll see the Toll Brothers. You'll see all, everyone. Now, this one looks like, it, is this your competition, Zach? That yeah, looks like it. Okay. So that's somebody that's smart, right? Like Zach. And everyone else that's buying from these people, stop it. Just do it yourself and get the process down. Like we've run the numbers for years. There's no reason, unless you're lazy, that you should be buying it from them. We we look at the bottom line of big teams and brokerages, and we see how 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 their net is because they go through these companies. So go and do your own Google PPC through Sierra. Have the systems down. Invest in getting better at talking to people and connecting with them because no one's going to beat us out when we treat this like a relationship business. That's you're the nail on the head. I, I, don't stop buying from the portals, please. Yeah, please do yourself a favor. JC, want to add anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think too, Zach, you've seen a big increase in your SEO traffic. So the organic yeah. traffic coming in based on results um, from the content. You mentioned that you're building out your guide pages and you're kind of building yeah. out more blogging content. Do you want to, do you want to chat about that for a second? Um, I'm happy to, I, I, I one of my biggest, one of the things like that, that, that things that uh, people, oh, you, we see a lot of talking heads in real estate, right? They, they, you say, well, I was people, I'm doing this, or I'm going to do this, or I have this thing. Right. And I, I really don't like talking about stuff until I can have it proven and give you real numbers behind it. Um, and we're still early in this new build out session. Uh, I, I will tell you that the organic traffic is significantly up from where it was with uh, where it had. Where's the, numbers. Zach, where's the, where's the traffic coming from? Is it coming from some of these community pages or is it coming? Yeah. From yeah. Um, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to pull my other screen here in a second and just Thanks, go. Buddy. I'll yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm probably not going to share this one, but I'm just going to go read down my list. Oh, good. Shoot. No, you're fine. That way I can just copy everything you're doing. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, I froze. R&D, right? Rip off and duplicate. Let's see why I froze here. All right, let's see. Back. All right, so we're, we're getting a lot of traction off of those longer tail keyword searches. Okay. Right, so... You're going to get a lot of traction off the of the, the low com competition stuff. So the search you just plugged in was Oklahoma City Homes for Sale, right? That's going to have a lot of competition. It's going to be an expensive ad to run. Yeah. Um, so we're targeting for a better ROI. I think you mentioned this earlier. You, you looked at your numbers per lead on a Zillow source or a PPC source. And we look at the same thing on different um, keywords and ads as well, right? Um, and then also in the SEO stuff. So what are the what are the high search uh, terms Dude, that are local that are? I just I just did a long tail keyword search for you, just you know because I was like, let's see yeah. what happened. So I typed in uh, homes for sale in Oklahoma City around the college and university. Oh, those are sponsored one for sure. And yeah. there you go. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, there we that, go. That, that's a sponsored one, but still, that's a long tail keyword. Yeah, we're we're doing both. 
we're, we're doing all the ads and we're doing it off of the SEO approach, right? Um, it, it has to all work together. They see you up in the ad and they see you down below, right? It doesn't just double your conversion. It, it, it's the sum of the, what's the, what's the old saying, JC? The sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yep, right? exactly. Both, both the multiplier <laughs> effect instead of an additional addition effect. Mm -hmm. um, so they all work together. I love that. And all, all, all work together. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of long tail stuff. You know, the stuff that, that has a lot of low competition um, as far as the, uh, because Zillow doesn't have the bandwidth to go talk about, you know, 144 Lock Lane, Yukon, Oklahoma, which is on, um, you know, a, 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 a back into a pond, right? Yeah, they'll never go into the niche. Right. And so we're, they're just, they're just a different, they're have a different model. And so if we know there's, there's openings in those, in those ways, that's the, what we're going to target and build out. You got it. That's Not it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And from a Sierra standpoint, I think one of the big competitive differentiations between us and all the other website providers out there is just that our, our websites are built on, uh, native application. So we don't build on WordPress or Squarespace or any of those website providers. Ours is all natively built um, from the ground up. And it's we pride ourselves on being very SEO friendly and best SEO powered because um, it's in the bones of our platform and our website structure to be able oh, to cool. continually IDX, um, index your site and continue to prompt Google to crawl your site and your pages, which will help boost your organic traffic over time, even if you're not proactively blogging out for those long tail keywords that you guys are talking about right now, that will definitely help, you know, take your organic traffic from here to here. Uh, but in terms of just the overall site structure itself, we're really built from the ground up to be able to power um, organic traffic and SEO results. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you. I actually didn't know that. Thank you. Of Thank course. You. Zach, I feel like we could go for another, probably like 30 minutes straight with pure knowledge. So I'm going to stop it. Perfect. But we already had somebody say great info. Um, so there's the link. If you want to test out Sierra, or if you want to take a look at them. JC, there were a few people here that needed you to reach out to them. Um, yep. one, of them one of them was Prayful. He's, he's a friend of mine. So uh, Prayful, reach out to JC or JC can reach out to... So then, JC, you can reach out to me if you don't get his info. I've got it. Uh, okay, Ruth, thank cool. you for jumping in here. You had two great questions there. Um, so I hope that you do go deeper into this and start jumping into Google PPC so you can start seeing great results, especially in your area, um, because I know it's working well there. And let me make sure I got everything else. Good pay-per-click. We explained that. All right. That's a wrap, Zach. Dude, you rock this, bro. Uh -huh. I'd love to talk to you more when you have the full build out on the communities to see what that looks like, to see how you strategize that, where you got the info, maybe how you even use ChatGPT to mm -hmm. build this out, made it your own, put in links. I want to see. I want to see this. Perfect. So, uh, well, I don't want to say a timeline publicly, but it's going to be really, really soon. Tomorrow. Perfect. Well, <laughs> I'm just no pressure, Zach. <laughs> thanks for doing this man jc uh, thanks for jumping in and helping out of course, too of course. Tristan, thanks, thanks so much Kristen. all right see you thanks, jc nice to meet you bye guys